Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brooke, that gratitude guy with another special guest on my gratitude podcast interview regarding the pandemic. And today I was thinking, I was thinking about my guest prior to having him on and I met this young man, gosh, five or six, probably eight or nine years ago now for all I know, but uh, very impressive man and a young man in the financial world and uh, became somebody I got having a fun time talking to from time to time and actually miss talking to him. It's Nathan Talbot from Florida. Nathan, welcome to the uh, podcast. Hey, David, how are you? I am well, I'm well. Thank you so much for joining in. So let me start off with just a question. This has gone on five or six weeks now, this pandemic. It's affected all of us in the country and in the world. What has been Nathan's best coping mechanism to kind of deal with this whole thing these last five, six, seven weeks, would you say? So yeah, this has been interesting for me as a, uh, as a father having two kids and having this start when they were on spring break. So, oh, yeah. you know, spring break plans canceled. We were going to go to some national parks in New Mexico, White Sands and Carlsbad Caverns. We had to cancel the trip. And when we were on vacation from home, uh, you know, it wasn't that bad. We got to just be around each other, played a lot of board games, puzzles. Uh, working out was really tough. Mm -hmm. um, so walking the dog was something that, you know, became a highlight of the day something that I used to not look forward to and my wife would do to something where now we have a route that takes about an hour to do and we go three miles and uh, our 10 year old dog is exhausted. So th those walks have been nice, but my favorite thing we're, we're here in South Florida is that we have a pool and I've just been putting a, a snorkel on and instead of working out like I normally do and trying to be intense, I just swim as long as I feel like it. Oh, wow. Wow. And that's been really great. It's something that I've never done. I, you know, love going to the gym. I like being competitive and playing basketball. Mm -hmm. And before this, when this crisis started, I went to the gym and I canceled my membership. Oh, wow. Because I knew that I, I go to the gym to play basketball and it's just not going to be okay having uh, 12 guys touch a ball and mm -hmm. uh, if there's no way to social distance in basketball. So I'm yeah. going to rejoin the gym when this is done. I went to the gym manager and I went to clear out my locker. He said, don't bother. Keep all your stuff here. Uh, we, we don't have any, you know, new people coming to take that locker. So when you're ready, come back and we'll get you set up. Interesting. Wow, that's good. I like that. I like that swimming part, too. And just realize, I think there's so many silver linings that are going to come out of this where people are going to save money and save time. And I've thought about even like these Zoom calls where I used to drive an hour to see a buddy of mine for an hour and drive back. And I, I spent three hours for a one hour talk. And I can do that with Zoom and I've got, I've got my cup of coffee right here and, and, and save a lot of time. So I think a lot of things will change. And you know me as, as Mr. Gratitude Guy. And so that's a big part of my life. And what, what would you say since this has happened, what are you, you notice what you're grateful for? Has it changed before this happened versus now that it's happened? Are you still grateful for those same things or has it changed a little bit? No, I'm just really grateful for my family. This, my wife and my kids, we've been closer than we've ever been. Fortunately, I have a seven and five year old that are playing with each other all the time now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm now more grateful for their teachers because oh, yeah. after spring break ended, um, home learning, uh, you know, having a five year old on Zoom from nine to two is almost impossible. Right. And so you're grateful for the opportunities for the kids to get outside. Um, my seven year old goes to a one week sleepaway camp in North Carolina every year. And mm. we're hoping that that happens this year because oh, yeah. he's been cooped in a lot. And I don't think that's, that's very good for kids. But we, our, I think our marriage has never been stronger because we actually like being around each other. And I've heard a lot of, you know, therapists and uh, psychologists saying that there's a lot of strife in this environment. But fortunately, I, you know, married someone that I actually think we like each other so that's that's that's, good that's the yeah they say that uh, some of the divorce attorneys uh, phone lines are lighting up and people are uh, having forced to spend too much time together but you mentioned that about the teachers gosh what a great comment because you just you forget I mean the teachers are teaching our children but at the same time they're kind of quasi babysitters as well and uh, boy that that level especially a five and a seven year old that level of intensity really makes you appreciate the teachers that much more so that's really cool so, so let me ask you this, if you think of your, you've always been pretty industrious and you've had a lot of, a lot of times that I've known that you've looked at different things to do and so forth. Any thoughts or ideas or um, 
tips you might give somebody what to do while they're kind of housebound and maybe stuck in their own homes that they might be able to do? Yeah. I've thought of this because my professional job job is slowed down. There's less people that are confident to invest in the stock market right now. So I thought for myself, you know, what can I do to, to better my, my, myself, not, not just professionally, but maybe personally. Um, I thought about studying for certain tests and designations. So um, I thought about, um, you know, a CFA uh, mm -hmm. and I have a lot more time than I normally have had in the past to, you know, sit down and quietly study for something. But I also heard someone say something I think was pretty profound. You know, we're in the middle of a once in a century pandemic mm -hmm. and there was someone that had a quote that said, if you're not doing something every day to better than your, better yourself, you're not taking advantage of this pandemic. I think it's just great to relax. I don't, I don't think people need to feel like they need to, you know, beat the world just because we're locked in our houses. So just kind of relaxing and maybe doing less, I think is probably the best thing that I can do for myself, but um, that's just me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the relationship with the kids and the relationship with Elizabeth and getting stronger and stronger. There's a lot of silver linings through this thing. It's just, it's amazing. There's, there's death and destruction. And I know that's really sad and terrible, but at the same time, there are some real silver linings in this gray cloud. And, and when you think about that, it, this is going to end at some point. I mean, they're going to get a vaccine. There's, it's either going to, they're going to st step it back up and getting the economy going again or whatever. So even we, as you think about trying to relax and, and put your time and effort into the family, is there anything that you're thinking about doing kind of, I don't know, I'd say hit the ground running when this is over that you might be doing differently now knowing what you know about having gone through this? Yeah, I think with something that I'm missing is just being around my friends mm. and being social. I think people are going to pour back into, you know, small socially distanced dinner parties. And I think people will go back to restaurants. Yeah and sporting, you know sporting events i don't know how i have a bet the nfl is going to start in september because mm -hmm. of how much money is behind it and how yeah. much frankly people like like their sports yeah so i'm going to watch the nfl draft tonight uh and right. i'm really excited about that i don't know why i'm excited about a draft i never have been in the past but right. this is as close as we get so you know i'm hoping baseball opens up with no fans and uh, yeah. they have golf events with you know no uh, people in the golf course other than the golfers and have you know I'm, I'm excited to watch sports and be around people but I don't know if things are gonna you know go all the way back to normal my kids play little league I'm hoping that they have little league games at the end of the game the kids high five each other and say good game that's right. not gonna happen again right I think for our last game before things actually got shut down all the kids lined up in a line and tip their cap to each other so oh, nice. maybe that's the future but um yeah just really looking forward for things to be normal again and i don't know if we'll ever have things exactly the same but we'll see yeah it'll definitely be different last question nathan do you have sort of a philosophy or maybe a quote or a line from the bible or just or anything that kind of represents your philosophy of how you approach things and and maybe uh not only your life uh but having gone through something like this that's kind of tough to kind of help you or guide you or sustain you through a tough time like this? You know, I, I don't, I have this book here and every page is a picture of my family and a quote. Oh, nice. But I couldn't, I haven't memorized any of them. So sometimes I'll flip through it and look at it. Um, That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Well, you and I have chatted about this before. It's, as much as I can relate to different people, uh, you cannot relate to them as well, in my humble opinion, in, in, on something unless you both have children. You and I both have children. I have a 35, soon to be 36-year-old, and a 25, soon to be 26-year-old. And There's something about, you talk about sustaining you, uh, children do an excellent job of doing that. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Well, listen, my friend, thank you so much. I got a couple of nice nuggets out of there, just as I suspected. So thank you so much for being part of my podcast. Thanks. You bet.